you got the little you got the little lion on the front. That's my favorite part of this motorcycle. Whoopsie daisy, you dropped the Benelli Lianchino. Uh, I think that with a rear suspension, you at least want to have rebound control. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob. And today we're out here with the Benelli Lianchino Trail 500 or 500 Trail or whatever they call it. This little motorcycle is a loaner that was given to us, and I am out here testing out whether or not this thing can scramble because I'm clocking spoked wheels, I'm clocking a big front tire, I'm clocking knobby rubber, and a little bit of ground clearance, though no skid plates, so we're not going to be going too hard. But I do wanted to test out whether or not this little bike can scramble. So, stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. Now guys, the little baby Benelli here is giving me some serious small desert sled vibes when I look at it. And Yam likes to ride his desert sled off-road, or at least he used to. He doesn't so much anymore. And I want to see if this little baby parallel twin can get out there and scramble. And to do that, I've brought it out to Lime Creek which is a good little twisty road because scramblers don't just need to go off-road, they need to be good on-road. And then I have a loop at the end of Lime Creek that we we're going to check out, which is a fun little spot that I've discovered that uh, allows us to goof around off-road. So, some things that I'm noticing about the Benelli first off. The, uh, the standing peg height on it is actually remarkably good. If I mount up on the bike and stand up it's actually really comfortable for me to stand on um, there's not a lot between my knees there which is a bit of a bummer but I don't really need much between my knees because I can just dig my outside knee into this little bit of tank here uh, the handlebars could be just a little bit higher um, so that I could get into a perfect standing position but otherwise it's actually really nice. The seat height is pretty approachable too, what I'm noticing. Uh, really easy to get on and use. I think there it might have a little too much pre-roll, preload in here. Let's see if I can, nope, looks like it's as soft as it gets. I can tighten it, but I don't want hard. I want most soft. Um, well, it's looking SV650 squid. Have fun, SV650 squid. There's not a lot of travel that I'm feeling in these forks when I'm just going down the road. It doesn't feel like this fork here is doing a lot of work, which is making me think that this is sprung a little stiff. Uh, I did hit a couple of bumps, and it was just a little bit stiff. Let's get it out on the road for our twisty road segment, and then we'll get it in the dirt to see how it does as a scrambler. But before I get too far into this one, I gotta take a second and shout out these flying eye sunglasses I'm wearing. This is a different pair that I pilfered from Josh. You know, I like my aviators, so I went with aviators, but this has the blue lenses and they're uh, a little bit brighter than my black lenses, which I'm actually liking. And the usual kit and caboodle with these flying eyes, they have these great thin stems that just slide ever so easily right into your helmet, which is great if you're a big brain boy like me and you wear uh, clear visors and sunglasses instead of getting a dark visor. More on that, I'm actually filming a video about riding at night and why I actually wear sunglasses. Not just because I, they make me look cool, but because they're an intelligent choice. I'm actually going to wait for that truck to get down the road because I do not want to be staring at the back of that thing the whole time. But yeah, if you want to get yourself a nice pair of flying eyes, like what I got, click that link down below. Check them out. They are our eyewear provider of choice. And that's for good reason. These things are solid. I really like them, so check them out. Alrighty, so mobbing down Lime Creek on the Benelli here, what are some initial impressions of its, you know, sporting inclination? Well, uh, the first and foremost is that the seating position is super, super neutral. Um, so if you wanted something that's just comfortable, something that's easy to ride, I'd say the Benelli's a great choice. This thing is super easy to uh, 
it's just super easy to sit on for a long period of time. Man, that truck is booking. Okay. But ergonomics aside, how about the power out of this motorcycle? It's fine. It's totally fine. I think that it's probably a little bit more pokey in the power delivery than the CBR 500R. Um, but not by a whole lot. But the reason why we tend to forgive it in this package is A, it's not trying to be a sport bike, and B, this thing is a lot cheaper than the Honda. The Honda is pretty egregious at its price point. But how about the rest of the package? The motor, you know, it's it's good and torquey and it's getting me down the road like a, you know, beginner bike, maybe a, a more powerful beginner bike. But what about the rest of it? The whole package here is solid, I would say. I don't think it's going to blow anybody's mind, but as a beginner motorcycle, sure, absolutely. This thing works great. It does all the motorcycle stuff goes down the road, it accelerates, it brakes. Um, I don't feel like it's going to get away from me ever. Uh, it's pretty friendly. And this bike, more so than any, to really get it to steer, because it has that long travel suspension in the big front tire, you do need to brake into corners with that front brake more so that you can compress the suspension a little bit. That is something that I'm noticing. The more I come in with front brake and shift the weight forward, the better the bike turns. So that is something to consider if you're looking at a longer, at a bike like this, you do need to ride it slightly different um, because that front end is a little bit taller. Uh, my Supermoto, it's the exact same way. The more you compress the front end, the better it turns. Uh, otherwise, the, the side to side can feel a little bit lazy, uh, a little bit heavy even. It doesn't, it doesn't really change directions quickly, but that's, you know, pretty par for the course for bikes with big front tires. There's a lot of rotational inertia there. Um, and if you don't, if you don't grab that front brake and compress the forks a little bit, you're not going to be able to overcome that as easily just by um, uh, just by turning the handlebars. Yeah, see that that feels so much better with a little bit of front brake before the corner. Just dip it down. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, I can get with that. The only problem with needing the front brake, uh, having the front brake be as imperative to the riding experience as it is on this motorcycle, is the front brake feel doesn't feel great. Um, it's pretty wooden. Uh, I'm sure fresh pads and fresh fluids would really help, but I'm not sure if it's going to be, you know, a one-stop shop. I feel like maybe the master cylinder might need an update or something like that. But if you're a beginner, the reality is that this master is going to work just fine for you. You don't really need to worry about, you know, oh, it's not telling me exactly what the front tire is doing because it doesn't matter for the kind of riding that you're going to be doing. And you know it's got a it's got a surprising amount of little get up and go out of this P twin. Uh, if you rev it out, it doesn't feel lovely because it's not that uh, 270 degree crank. It's the um, I believe it's a 180. Even though it sounds kind of good at idle, so these engines tend to be a little bit buzzy when you rev them out. Doesn't really feel great, but you know. It, that's me as somebody who's spent a lot of time on a lot of different engines. As a beginner, it's going to feel totally fine. It's going to feel like revving out like a... It's like a V6 Mustang versus, you know, a V8. Um, it's, not, it's not the real deal, but if you're just looking to have some fun, it's going to have you some... It's going to give you a good time, you know? One thing that does bum me out just a little bit, 
uh, again, as an experienced motorcyclist, does the gearbox feel, it's not great. Um, it does what you need it to. Uh, it totally shifts gears. It gets the bike from second to third and third to fourth, but it doesn't do it in the most uh, great way. It doesn't feel super responsive. Um, it's not, it's not bad, but there's just like a little click when you get to the end of the travel and the lever moving is just a bit splashy. Um, it is possible. I, I literally bought new boots right before getting on this, uh, bike. So it's possible that it's still toe feel out of the new boots, but this is just an updated version of the boots I've been wearing for years. So... I'm not sure that's the case. I think it's just a little bit cheap, which, eh, it's fine. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about here in the Twisty Road segment is how does the throttle feel? Because that's one thing that I was going to be a little bit nervous about getting on this motorcycle. Because, you know, fueling a motorcycle and having it feel good and be cheap, it's really hard to do, especially with modern uh, emissions regulations and so forth. It's hard to get that right. And I don't think it's perfect by any means, but it's not bad. It's totally functional. It doesn't feel like it's stuttering. Um, the on off throttle, it's a little herky jerky, but you know, uh, not not at the worst that I felt. I've definitely felt worse out of uh, Japanese motorcycles. You know, MT-07 comes to mind. But that could just be down to how much torque that thing has, not necessarily the fueling. Either way, it feels fine. Um, not the best, but certainly not the worst. And I think that describes a good scrambler in twisties. Not the best, but it'll hang with pretty much any other bike out there as long as you're going normal street speeds. But let's get this thing in the dirt and see how it shakes up. Alrighty, now we are out here on one of my favorite little just test trails. Um, the, the, somebody literally just made a loop out here. Um, and I like taking bikes out here just to play around. Um, first thing I'm noticing as I'm puttering through here is the uh, shifter is in a very street oriented spot right now. Um, it's very low, but I mean, they're probably expecting you to grab this as a street bike and then, you know, whoops, that's neutral. See what I mean? It's really hard to shift around on this bike. It's, you've got to basically be sitting. Um, and if I had my KLR out here, I could adjust that, but alas, I do not. So we're just going to be out here puttering around, doing a couple of laps with it as it stands. And, you know, it's not great, but it's fine. It's totally fine. I wouldn't do anything more aggressive than this, um, and I wouldn't go much faster than I'm going. Uh, first of all, these Metzlers, these trail wings or trail masters or whatever they're called, they work. They're, they're fine, but oh, they're not great. They don't have a ton of grip. And one thing that I'm noticing is that stiff suspension that I mentioned earlier, it's kind of getting out of sorts over some of those more, you know, baby heady style rocks, which that's sort of to be expected. Um, bikes like this, they don't, they don't exactly perform the best, but that's all stood up. Let's do this, you know, kind of baby boy beginner mode and see what we can get. You know, on this little flowing, you know, fire road feeling segment feels great you know this totally fine but this is basically a road um it's really hard packed but now let's let's go through a little bit more zestification here
yeah, okay. Sure. All right, I'm gonna stand up through this because this is gonna suck. Okay, where's the, where's the right spot? Okay, sit back down, do this beginner boy style. Oh. Yeah, so it's really easy to lose the rear. Um, I wish there was a little bit more travel out of this suspension, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's a really stiff suspension in the rear, which is fine for as you're street riding. But if you're trying to do anything like this, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna do it. But you know, let's do, let's do one more lap. Let's just go nice and chill and just be like, yeah, I'm going for like a little adventure. Let's do that. Not try to go quick, just just try to go and you know have some fun like a uh, an aspiring scrambly boy would. And let's see if it can do it like that. One more lap. All right, so I'm timid. I've never gone off road before. Oh, this is feeling pretty good. This is feeling pretty good, but of course, I mean you can you can really zip on this thing on a flat section of dirt like this this is totally fine but let's slow it down going through here you know, we're just we're just out here puttering along so f I'm noticing right now that first gear is a little bit more grabby on off throttle um, let's kick it up in a second see how it feels Ugh, ugh. I'm not standing up. I'm doing this absolute beginner boy mode. Oop. Back down to first. Um, again, we come back to how stiff the rear is. Um, I think if they had softened that rear suspension just a little bit and allowed for slightly more adjustability, then yeah, that would really improve the feel out here. Um, I, I really do think that, oh man, uh, 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 I think that with a rear suspension, you at least want to have rebound control. Because <laughs> it's, it's rebounding quite fast. Um, again, great for the street, but not so much for off-road riding. Um, but, all of that being said, that's that's me coming at this like somebody who's done this stuff before. Eh, the ABS isn't isn't very happy coming to a skid and stop there. Um, you, I wonder, can I disable the ABS? That's the horn. I'm gonna guess this is just cycling through the dash. Yeah, no, we're not gonna be able to turn off ABS, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, means you gotta pull the fuse. So, let's pull over here and start wrapping up our thoughts on the Benelli. Okay, so, can the Benelli Liacino, Lianchino, scramble? Yeah, sure, totally, absolutely it can. I would say that if you are going to try to use this as a proper scrambler the first thing that i would do is i would address that rear shock a little bit see if you can get something that's either got a little bit more adjustability or something with maybe even a little bit more travel uh just something to soften the suspension just a little bit this is totally fine this is totally fine for you to do this sort of dirt right here this hard packed dirt um, you know, like a fire road. This, you can absolutely tear this up on the Leoncino, totally fine. But you could basically tear this up on any motorcycle, to be honest. The place where this starts to fall apart is when there's stuff. You know, you're going over stuff. And you're gonna be going over stuff a lot when you're scrambling, you're going off road. And it just gets a little out of sorts. It's not so bad that, uh, I don't know, I don't feel like you couldn't slow down and crawl over some stuff if you're not feeling confident going quick. So there is that. You could probably just crawl over most stuff on this motorcycle because these Tourance tires, 
they're not the best off-road. They're like my Shinko 705s, but a little bit higher quality. Um, yeah, no, they totally work off-road. You can, you can goof around on stuff like this. The other problem with the Lee and Chino, um, and I'll show you this firsthand. Uh, I apologize, Benelli, if you're watching. I'm going to set this motorcycle down. Urgh, nice and slow. Okay. Whoopsie daisy, you dropped the Benelli Lianchino. Um, actually, you know what? I need to stand here for a thumbnail. Okay. How heavy is this motorcycle to pick up? Now, I've picked up a lot of bikes in my day. <laughs> a lot of heavy bikes. So take this with a grain of salt, but let me, let me pick this guy up right here. All right, we're on the wheels, and we're up. Um... That was a five out of 10 in terms of difficulty to pick up. It was pretty much average. It wasn't the best, it wasn't great. Uh, I've certainly picked up lighter motorcycles. But uh, I don't know, if this is your first motorcycle off-road, you might wanna go with a buddy when you're scrambling it, and at least until you've developed enough strength to pick it up on your own. So, let's start wrapping some stuff up here. Let's get some numbers going. I would give the Leoncino like a 7 out of 10 on the street. I honestly would. It feels great for what it is. It's a, it's a solid B student motorcycle. Um, as a beginner bike, totally a great option. As a scrambler, I'm going to have to dock it just a little bit. I'd give it like a 5.5 or a 6 because, let's face it, scramblers generally aren't particularly adept so it's like grading on a curve but i mean even on the curve it's a little tough to make the case because of the way the suspension is set up however if you have this motorcycle i highly encourage you to just go goof around wherever because a the bike is cheap and b you know it's not bad i've definitely ridden worse motorcycles off-road and you got the little you got the little lion on the front that's my favorite part of this motorcycle it's got a hood ornament so that's gonna do it for this video um hopefully you guys enjoyed this little look at the leoncino as a scrambler and uh if you did let me know down in the comments below while you're down there don't forget to check out flying eyes and a big shout out to benelli for sending us this leoncino to you know really shake down and uh Hopefully we get some more stuff from them. Yeah, I, I approve of this motorcycle. I think it's I think it's a great little option, um, especially at the price. So there you have it. I'll catch you guys in the next episode of Yammy Noob. Keep watching Amy Noob!